Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Louise Hubar begins now. Good evening. New changes to the country's booster rollout has seen 1.5 million more Australians become immediately eligible for the jab. It will act as an additional layer of defence against the Omicron variant as Tasmania prepares to welcome back travellers from high-risk destinations later this week. It's all apples for Tasmania State Growth Minister ahead of borders reopening on Wednesday. This is the week that Tasmania's borders reopen and Tasmania is ready. But for many, it won't be business as usual. We've always had a COVID safe plan in place and um, it's just obviously real, you know, re-engineering it as things uh, progress. The opposition concerned the messaging from the government to businesses hasn't been clear enough. Outline what the rules are for each business and make sure that Tasmanians understand. We are going to have our borders open this week and the world is going to change for Tasmanians. I would encourage any business uh, with those sorts of questions to go first to Business Tasmania, to the TCCI, to the WorkSafe uh, websites and look through the resources. Surging ahead with the reopening plan despite Omicron concerns. The federal government is now hoping a move by a target to bring forward booster shots will help slow the spread, cut down from six months to five. It will mean an extra one and a half million people are now eligible to immediately access the boosters. By the end of the month, that number will jump to 4.1 million. Research out of Israel suggesting it will be more effective at the earlier date. By six months, there is some de declining protection to Omicron and so Atagi felt that there was a good reason to get people uh, boosted. Moderna is now also available for booster shots alongside Pfizer. As for which one to go with? There's no clear difference, so it depends what's available and people sometimes might have a preference. Meg Sides, 7 Tasmania News. The state government is hoping Tasmanians will be bowled over by the cricket and support the Ashes match next month at Blunston Arena for the fifth test against England. Cricket Australia has taken a punt on us. Um, they've gone and backed Tasmania in. We believe it's the right decision. We need to show them that we can make an event like that work and that, that way we'll see more of them in the future. Members of the Cricket Australia board voted unanimously for the series finale to be hosted in Hobart for the first time in history. The threat from a bushfire at Sisters Beach has now been downgraded to advice level despite worsening conditions. Last night, residents and those in neighbouring areas watched on as the flames lit up the sky, the blaze remaining at a Watch Act level until 9pm. Looked over in between Sisters Beach and Boat Harbour. The bushfire is currently being controlled, but a smoke alert remains in place for Rocky Cape. Hundreds of people have gathered in Hobart protesting against vaccine mandates. The group marched through Salamanca Place before rallying outside Parliament. Many people here today will have lost their jobs or will know someone who has. And we're standing up for the freedom to choose whether we have the vaccine or not. So it's a pro-choice rally, not an anti-vax rally. The rally is just one of many being held around Australia today and comes a day after Tasmania hit its 90% vaccination target. Pups and pooches of all shapes and sizes have gone barking mad for the annual Christmas party at Wobbly Boot Vineyard. This year the event is teaming up with a local shelter to help rehome animals just in time for the holidays. A perfect day out for the whole family, dogs and their owners lapping up the food and music at Wobbly Boot Vineyard. Everyone's so busy doing their own thing with their own families that sometimes the dog is uh, tied up and left aside. So we've made a special day just before Christmas just for people to spend some quality time with their dog. The event so popular, many keep running back. Uh, we came last year and it was a really great experience for the dogs so we just wanted to bring them back this year and let them have their own Christmas really with the other dogs. Yeah, it's been great and I've got a cold beer so can't complain. It's a nice relaxed atmosphere and nice thing to do before Christmas. Now in its sixth year, organisers are pairing with small paws to help rehabilitate animals in need of love this festive season. The charity relying on the goodwill of the community to keep up its important work. They can donate by 
uh, giving a donation at the Wishmas Tree. They can also donate money. Uh, and we've also got a raffle that we're running. Smallpaws helps to rehome around 350 animals per year, including dogs like Little Mukra. Just his looks and that just appealed to me, and I thought he'd be a nice size for me and everything. And... <laughs> Yeah, he's just amazing. A reminder to also celebrate our four-legged family members this Christmas. Ainsley Kosh, 7, Tasmania News. Tasmania's rising touch football stars have battled it out for the title of state champions. Teams from Burnie to Hobart striving to claim bragging rights with an elite few handpicked to represent the Apple Isle at Nationals. A high-stakes game to be crowned state champions. Amelia Branston scoring a try to help lead the Launceston team to the win against Hobart. They're a really quick team and they gave it to us there and we just were able to keep our composure, which was really good. Highlight of these events is actually having the best players from each of the affiliates playing against each other. It means that the competition's higher, it means the standard of high, is higher of the, uh, the skills that we see on, on display. The game is much faster. The game important preparation as team members pack their bags for New South Wales, where they'll represent Tasmania at next year's Nationals. Nationals is held in Coffs Harbour um, in March, um, and so you play from Wednesday to Saturday, um, and you play teams all around Australia. It's such a high level competition. With the sport growing in popularity, many fields like this one have been upgraded, offering a faster and more competitive game to players. You come up here on a Tuesday night and the car park's packed, that every field is, is being played on. It's really good to see, especially filtering through our juniors into our women's. It's, yeah, really good. I hope the sport keeps growing. And it's not just women being drawn to the sport. The Tasmanian State Cup seeing a growing number of male and the over 30s also playing. Elizabeth O'Neill, 7 Tasmania News. The Tasmania Jack Jumpers shooting woes have continued in a disappointing loss to the Cairns Taipans. The team only drained five shots from beyond the three-point line in the first three quarters. Josh Marget was the best in a losing side, scoring 19 points. The Jack Jumpers going down 69 to 62. Oh, it's got the job done. Trying to build a fortress there. It wasn't pretty at times. You lose your floor, General. It was the first win of the season for the Taipans, who were without their star, Scott Mercado, who suffered an apparent foot injury just six minutes into the game. Good evening. The high today was 23 at Scotts Peak, 18 in Hobart, Launceston 22, Burnie 19 and 20 in Devonport. 21 at Strawn today, King Island and Grove both 20 degrees, 19 at Smithton, Bushy Park, the Friendly Beaches and on Flinders Island, Lowhead 18, St Helens and Mariah Island 17 and Lyawini 15. Low level cloud over the eastern half of the state today, slowly decreasing during the day. That morning cloud over central and western parts also cleared for the afternoon. Low level coastal cloud is seen mo across most of Australia, which is connected with onshore winds. There is an associated trough with a line of cloud through central and southern parts. Tomorrow the high to the southeast of Tasmania will weaken slightly and the low moves southeast as the front weakens to a trough and extends from northern WA through South Australia then to the west of Tasmania. Another ridge extends across southern WA and the Bight. Winds north to northeasterly 10 to 20 knots reaching 20 to 30 knots in the northwest and 15 to 25 knots in the lower east and southeast. Lighter, more variable winds around the southwest, tending northwest to southwesterly, 10 to 20 knots in the west later in the evening, seas 1 to 3 metres. Another day with no warning, sunny down south tomorrow, Hobart 25, Dover 23, ooze a very warm 28 degrees. Mostly sunny in Launceston 24, 20 in Devonport, partly cloudy there, also partly cloudy in Scottsdale 21. A partly cloudy day across the west, Burnie 19, Strawn 26, 20 for Stanley. St Helens a partly cloudy day, 20, Swansea 21, mostly sunny there, and Ross 25 and mostly sunny. Very high UV tomorrow with 10s and sunrise at 5.30am. Looking ahead now to Tuesday, showers mainly about the southwest and far south during the morning. Wednesday, mainly fine about the north coast and the northwest, showers elsewhere. And showers on Thursday about the northwest and southwest, mainly fine elsewhere.
Partly cloudy in Adelaide tomorrow, 24. Brisbane, 29. Partly cloudy. Heating up in Alice Springs, 38. And a hot one for Melbourne, 32 degrees. Right now in Hobart, it's 18 and sunny. Launceston, 19. Partly cloudy. Devonport, 17. Mostly sunny. And it's nice to have had a weekend with no weather warnings, Lou. And a beautiful week ahead. Thanks for that, Carmen. That's all your news for this Sunday evening. Thank you for joining us. Enjoy your evening. Good night.